Oh, I would have laughed after all that set up, everything topples oh, over. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, review over. It's like we're in the Blair Witch right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we gotta climb the tree to get our drone out of the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the Fathom event, we might as well start this three times over. Yeah, yeah this was a fun screening. That was hilarious. Yeah. It what was, was that music that played? First? It was like club music. Yeah, it's like, it, yeah, it was clearly like. It was, Baby, baby, yeah. Young Frankenstein. Yeah, they, start, they started playing the credits for Young Frankenstein from 1974. Yeah. But the sound was playing from what clearly was supposed to be an ad that was going to play before the movie. So it was like it was rescored with something from 2016. I lean over to you because you you'd never seen the movie before. So yeah. I lean over to Fail and I'm like, that's that, that's not the real. Music from the <laughs> no, it was totally the real music. Like we're getting suddenly we're getting the yeah. soundtrack from Fifty Shades of Black in front of this. Yeah. Like, this seems Frank about is appropriate for a 70s movie. Yeah. <laughs> so then that music went away and it was quiet for a little bit. The credits continued, but it was mute. And then some other music started. Yeah. And then it went black again. <laughs> and you just suddenly heard, It's time for real. <laughs> We're, like, we're at the riff tracks riff? of Young Frankenstein. Yeah, that's gonna be a really challenging yeah. riff. Yeah, it's like riff tracks. Did you just troll us? Like, bravo, bra fucking vo. You wouldn't even be mad. You'd be like, all right, let's do riff tracks. Uh, all right. And then the credits started again. Only, well, the music was right, but it was uh, it was cropped into two thirty five. Yeah, yeah, it was cropped, so it looked like you got they were showing a shitty DVD of it yeah. that was full screen, but they put bars over. Yeah. <laughs> and then that went away, and then it, it popped up this thing, like, presented in its original aspect ratio. Like, yeah. The, the, what you just showed begs to differ. Yeah. The, I, uh, I got the impression that what had happened was that some guy was trying to jump the gun. Yeah. Because after that, we got the Mel Brooks introduction. Yeah, Mel yeah. Brooks introed yeah. it. And it, that was maybe, I, I don't know if that was live. There's some stuff for Fathom events where they do do live things like that. I don't know if this was. It looked yeah. like it was fairly live. It, yeah, it had to have been tonight, I think. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. When he started doing the Mussolini Hitler stuff, <laughs> yeah. and then he had like the kooky hair and the wind yeah. as he's doing like, it, mm -hmm. yeah. so good. Like, I don't know if we weren't going to get that before, but I'm glad, I guess, we got delayed yeah. and saw that, because it was pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> One of the ushers came out in the theater like, yeah, there, there's something going wrong up there. Uh, they're fixing in it now. Yeah. Apparently there was something that went wrong during the Fathom screening of Yoga Hosers, but it was during the post-movie Q&A, so I was uh. gone by that point. <laughs> like, the next day I was in the theater, The I was like, yeah, I was at fucking Yoga Hosers last night, and the girl was like, oh, sorry, the projector went out. I'm like, what? She's <laughs> like, it was during the Q&A. I was like, oh, I was gone by that point. <laughs> why, That's couldn't, fine. why couldn't that have happened during the movie? <laughs> <laughs> what, was there a like a, a child in the theater. It, yeah, it was a special needs kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was in the very front row. Uh, it took me a moment. Like, what, what is going? Because yeah, they, they, why are they finding just a skeleton funny? Yeah. <laughs> Everything was hilarious to this kid. I, so yeah. I think they had a good time. Well, that's good. Like, I didn't know if it was a child who was upset or if it was a video game ghost. Like, yeah. video <laughs> game ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you told me that before I made a video game ghost joke. <laughs> you jerk but the Hitler joke was great yeah that, okay that that honestly you're right um, yeah. that honestly makes so much sense to me because as that went on for like 15 or 20 minutes I was like why are they still in the theater because like, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. it was a child who was scared by the movie yeah. mm. I, I think they were having a good time like uh -huh. they would make kind of shrieking noises but I think mostly they were they were laughing mm -hmm. yeah. about stuff yeah. yeah it did take me a minute to be like Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but Never mostly mind. when like the music was louder, you couldn't really hear it, so it no. wasn't it wasn't too distracting except the yeah. quieter parts. But yeah. it, it wasn't I, too often. It was like no, it was, after yeah. like twenty minutes, like I don't know if I really heard it that no. much. I could hear some people behind me who were like every now and then kind of quoting along with the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, oh, I didn't hear that. I liked that there was a guy like in the row behind us who tried to applaud a couple times. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going. No. Yeah. There was a guy. No, no. There was someone at the very end of the movie behind me that decided to go, oh, yeah. 
We're not that kind of audience. Yeah. Well, you know with this, it makes sense. But I remember being at a showing of like Harry Potter when it first <laughs> aired, and someone like, Woo! Yeah. It's like can, all right, look, yeah. they're not, they're not yeah. listening. I was gonna say I could do you one better. Transformers Three oh, got a God. giant applause. Oh God, yeah. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> no. And there was one. There was one where it was kind of like what you just said, where it was like somebody thought the audience was way more into it than they actually were. <laughs> yeah. It was probably for some YA thing, like the, oh. the host maybe, and like oh. at the end, like one person was like, "Yeah," w uh, and stopped <laughs> yeah. when no one else was doing it. You loved he did it twice though. Like the credits first came up, I heard them like, "Ah, nothing," and then you know once it popped up the end and started the <laughs> next part of the credits, they tried again. And no one's the going rest, along with it. So, oh. The rest of the audience is just like. Overrated. <laughs> there, there, there was a guy, but there was a guy behind me when it was showing the trailers for the other Fathom events, and mm -hmm. the, it was the what was it the um the Adam West animated Batman movie. I can't uh, wait yeah. for that. There yeah. Was a, yeah, there was a dude behind me that went yeah. By himself. <laughs> the greatest thing is, that'll be. I haven't even seen it yet. That'll be the best Batman movie of the year. <laughs> yeah, that'll be funny. <laughs> well, you hadn't seen this movie before, did you like it? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Like you're saying. Is a good thing I saw Robin Hood Man in Tights and not this before now. <laughs> I thought we were seeing young Einstein. <laughs> yeah. Should have totally stayed at home, watched Dracula Dead yeah. and Loving It. Right? <laughs> we're Frankenstein yeah. Dead and Loving It. I was like, when does Frankenstein discover the formula for making beer? <laughs> <laughs> The name's Einstein. <laughs> Albert Einstein. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why Mel Brooks introduced this. <laughs> Apparently he had something to... I just found out recently he had something to do with solar babies, so maybe he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Fathom Events solar babies? <laughs> yes. Fathom Events bushwhack. Uh, bushwhack. Or they uh, do some of the lesser Mel Brooks movies, like they'll have a double feature of Dracula Dead and Loving It and Life Stinks. <laughs> Slash the Elephant Man. Yeah! Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. Really Slash weird double fly. feature. Mm -hmm. Which one? Slash the Fly. The fl did Mel Brooks have yeah, something to do Mel the Brooks, fly? Yeah, Mel Brooks produced the remake of The Fly. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Apparently, wow. How do you know, guys? Yeah, apparently he went around the premiere handing out little, like, fly hats to the audience. <laughs> oh, that's cool. oh, right, and they thought it was going to be funny. Yeah. And then it started and it really wasn't. <laughs> the best joke of all. Oh, that's, so that's like when Homer said that episode of The Simpsons where Homer was Mel Brooks's limo driver. And he goes, oh, yeah. uh, I love that movie, Young Frankenstein. Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Mel Brooks uh, like, thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, used to, I still have at home... The first, like, my original VHS for this that I got when I was a kid. The one that was released by, like, Key Video. Where on the, the, the pictures on the back of the box are colorized. Mm -hmm. And on the side of it, it's the little picture on the side isn't, um... It's not a shot from the movie. It's just a picture of Mel Brooks. It's just like a stock photo of Mel Brooks. It's just on the side of the box. But yeah. Key Video would do that for. They would have a series yeah. they'd put out of different directors and it, directors, and it would all be just like a picture of the director on the side of it. Yeah. They showed us a lot of color photos when we were waiting endlessly yeah. for this to yeah. start too. Some of that was interesting. Yeah, I I remember when I first saw this as a kid, because I, I used to watch this all the time when I was younger. I, I, I've seen this movie countless times. It's probably been a few years since I've seen it, but it's one of those that I've seen so much as a kid where even if it'd been 10 years since I'd seen it, I'd watch it tonight and feel like yesterday was yeah. only the last time I saw it. Mm. Um, but I remember being super, super young, and my either my mom or dad renting it and I only remembered the box cover at the video store and being like four years old and seeing that yeah. box cover I thought it was a horror film because yeah. it looks like a horror film. you're four years old and you see the box cover with crazy haired Gene Wilder and everything in the monster yeah. and you think it's a horror film yeah. like I don't know dad I, it might be really scary <laughs> wait a minute this is hilarious <laughs> Just being four and not getting some of the jokes in it. <laughs> well, What's a Schwanstucker? Yeah. I mean, I, I had the best first experience with this movie. Yeah. I, w I watched it as in flight on a plane <laughs> at, at zero o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep on an overnight yeah. flight back from Magfest. <laughs> Truly the best way to experience Young Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> An airplane is how I saw... Um, 
a train. <laughs> uh, the paper with goes, Michael, Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I saw quills on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> now we were planning to watch this a few times. Yeah, we so kept I'd talking about it, and then it. we saw it, like the Fathom Events yeah. advertising, mm -hmm. and I'm like, let's go. And then yeah. you decided that you should go and watch Little Fockers on a plane instead. <laughs> So well, like we, you were watching this on a plane. That's a step up because you you always get caught with the worst movies on an airplane, like Little Fockers and <laughs> Gulliver's Travels. Yeah. And Jack Black. <laughs> when was the first time you saw this? I I don't remember. I remember it being on TV a lot, and that's yeah. probably how I watched it, just around Halloween every once mm. in a while. I mean, I've seen it multiple times, yeah. so I I was familiar with it, and I have it on VHS, but. Uh, See, I don't remember the first time, but um, it's been a, a few years since I'd seen it, so um, a lot of the jokes, you know, it was it was fresher for me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. My memory's bad, but the part that always sticks with me, my favorite part, is always the putting on the Ritz scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's funny. <laughs> that is a terrific scene. Like, I, lo I knew you would laugh at it, too, and you were laughing, but mm -hmm. you were laughing harder when they start throwing, like, cabbages at you. <laughs> that's that's my favorite part of that scene, too. Yeah. Like, me and him were laughing our asses off. Like, first of all, that, that's... Look, Why that's they your have... own fault for giving them cabbages. Yeah. When they got it. <laughs> they're, so, they're so disappointed in his performance. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> they're really amazed that he can walk and stuff <laughs> when he's doing like the leading stuff. Like he's yeah. a dog too. Gives him a little treat. Yeah. <laughs> just like, oh, boo! <laughs> he got startled by that sparking light. <laughs> yeah. It's like a second after things go bad. It's like the light, the light blows up. It's like, it's fine. It's fine. And then really quick after that, like, wow, this this audience wanted it to be perfect uh, yeah. or nothing. Right? <laughs> Cabbages, lettuce, yeah. tomatoes, like, that's my favorite yeah. part of that scene. Too. It's that, great. It's that great. scene perfectly encapsulates the sort of brilliance of this movie. And uh -huh. it, it really, it, it does a thing that comedies don't really do these days and that really... You know, invokes the sense of the era. You can, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Can you can tell that Mel Brooks really went out of his way to get all the people that sort of worked on those movies in the yeah. 1930s. You know, yeah. the original Frankenstein movies, and it really mm. has the feel of one of those movies. And then a joke will happen, yeah. and, it, and it feels really organic and really funny. Just, yeah. You just the scene will start off, you know, fairly mm -hmm. straight, and then it will just move sideways into absurdity yeah. and there's yeah. there's some scenes that are because this movie I saw before I saw the uh, James Whale movies yeah. Frankenstein Bride of Frankenstein mm -hmm. and this movie works so well mm -hmm. as parody and just a, as parody mm -hmm. for one and just even if you haven't seen what it's spoofing like yeah. Yeah. you, you won't be it. yeah you won't be sitting there confused like no. and then later on when i saw like frankenstein yeah. and bride of frankenstein they're great movies they they are yeah. i've seen them many times but there's quite often in them where i do kind of laugh because yeah. some scenes in it in this are kind of straight out of like Bride of Frankenstein yeah. mm -hmm. like I'll be what it, it's sort of like airplane and zero hour in that mm -hmm. regard where like even in I think it's Bride of Frankenstein where Igor drops the brain because he startles yeah. himself yeah it's hard to see that done straight yeah. in the horror yeah. film and not kind of laugh because you're picturing Marty yeah. Feldman there's, there's a lot of affection <laughs> in the movie because it, yeah. it works as both parody and as a homage Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and it's it's the perfect example of a, a good parody film compared to what they do now because it's, um, it's focused uh -huh. on one thing, but it's also something really affectionate. Yeah. Um, and it's not just focused on referencing another movie yeah. or just being sexual or over-the-top gross jokes like they have those in it yeah but they're funnier because it's not constant yeah um and, and it doesn't have loads of topical references yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. you don't exactly. feel like everything's yeah. about 1974 that's why it holds up so yeah. well oh, too totally. that even though you know it's absurd they throw cabbages at him like it is it was very true of a lot of those movies yeah that no the yeah. dumb crowds uh -huh. yeah. fault yeah. that yeah. everything goes bad yeah uh, like yeah. why were they throwing shit at king kong what yeah. did they think was gonna happen <laughs> if, if well, any if anything, the sort of period setting and how well they managed to sort of, you know, replicate the old mm -hmm. black and white movies gives it a real kind of timeless quality. Yeah. And the movie has, which a lot of parodies don't, a lot of modern parodies don't, this movie actually has heart. Like, yeah. It actually yeah. has heart to it. It's not just 
a soulless product. Yeah. It's not like, and then Dracula comes in and walks yeah, yeah. out the door. <laughs> well, and they, they would they would quote things from Frankenstein that you're really familiar with. Yeah. But they would make it funny and not just like, oh, and then Iron Man comes in. And yeah. Falls yeah. over. You know, it would be like he does the it's alive, and yeah. they have this shot of Peter Boyle just like. Yeah. 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 Right? Which, That's kind of uh, weird. Which uh, makes it funny even if you haven't seen. Yeah. Frankenstein or Bride of yeah, Frankenstein yeah. like that's still funny because yeah. of that one Gene Wilder's always hilarious when he goes over the yeah. top uh, yeah. but also that reaction of yeah. Peter Boyle yeah well, there's also that kind of variance in the, in the sort of tone because you know there are the broad slappy slapsticky gags that Mel Brooks mm -hmm. is known for yeah. but mm -hmm. there's a lot of really quiet moments there's a lot of really great sort of like eye rolls and you know reaction shots that, mm -hmm. that are you know much subtler than, and, you know there's a nice little variety there it's not yeah. constantly oh they're falling over props and everything mm -hmm. well, there's a lot of great physical humour in this that is not just someone falling mm -hmm. like there'll be uh, all of the gags of Peter Boyle like his finger getting set on fire and <laughs> yeah. things like that there's also the guy with with the, the wooden arm that's constantly yeah, like yeah. you know whirling yeah. it around and to stuff the like lumber that. Yard. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> that keeps happening to Frankenstein's that there's cops like with weird wooden arms. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the monster just keeps running into girls and blind guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, and that it, it could be a sequel yeah. and be yeah. just as ridiculous as any of the real ones. I, yeah, I, I've I, forgotten Gene Hackman's cameo in yeah. this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's that was hard. great. <laughs> I was gonna make espresso. Yeah, I love when the monsters with the little girl. And you no, know, it's pretty much doing the scene where the Frankenstein monster meets the little girl. It's like, yeah. what should we throw in the well next? He just looks at the camera. <laughs> you know. He throws her in that window, which appears to have knocked her out. That was amazing. <laughs> Shoots her in off the teeter totter. <laughs> I, I think the biggest laugh I get out of this is well, most of Marty Feldman's lines. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. probably my favorite character in the movie, but that scene where Madeline Kahn shows up at the end <laughs> and Marty Feldman does the darling, well, let's turn in. And. Then when he starts Help me biting with the bags, <laughs> you take the blonde one, and I'll get the one in the service. He starts biting her, and it's like one part where Gene Wilder, you can tell he kind of cracks a little bit because yeah. he says to Marty Feldman, like, just stop it. <laughs> like, he's kind of cracking. <laughs> like maybe that was the fiftieth take yeah. they did, and that was the most he didn't bust up while doing that scene. Marty <laughs> Feldman in this movie, he really, he really steals the show. But it's yeah. it's a really great performance because. So much of this movie is really kind of played straight to a certain degree. If you look at Wilder's performance, for mm -hmm. example, he's not really mugging for the camera the entire time. You know, he's, you know he goes crazy when he yeah. needs to, but mm -hmm. there, are, there are moments where he's restrained, and you know a lot of them aren't really playing towards the camera, mm -hmm. which makes it so much funnier when uh -huh. Marty breaks it and looks yeah. straight into the camera and goes, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> H. Delbrook, and looking at... <laughs> like he knows who that is <laughs> one of my my favorite gags is a really early one when uh, Gene Wilder's in his classroom and yeah. he does the my grandfather's work was doo doo yeah, yeah and he puts his, his, the scalpel in his leg and yeah. then he's like Cross crosses his legs, legs. Oh, yeah. like, cool. Gene Wilder is a genius at yeah. that like of just calm cool and then sudden outbursts of just a manic wild man mm -hmm. and then reining it bra b back in to where it, it does feel natural when he yeah. does it. It feels natural when he gets excited and screams, but also yeah. when he restrains himself again and like you said, yeah. like where he just crosses his leg to cover up the fact he just stabbed himself with a scalpel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, got, he's got so much wonderful manic energy, but it's really controlled. It's, uh -huh. not, it's not, you know, him just, you know, constantly going for the gag. I mean, that gag with the scalpel is at the end of a fairly long scene that doesn't mm -hmm. start out with loads and loads of jokes, but it just gradually yeah. builds. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great movie at... at build up for the payoff which yeah. makes it better than just constant jokes being thrown at you mm. but it's not slow either so it no. doesn't feel like okay here's nothing happening we're waiting for a joke mm -hmm. yeah it always builds up the sort of comic tension yeah. building up mm -hmm. there's great callbacks too like of course the horse is going insane Frau whatever Blucher. Frau Blucher's name gets said and then yeah. an hour goes by and Frau Blucher's probably not in the movie for about an hour or so and then she comes back later 
and they say your name, and yeah. again, the horses come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so many great comedians in this. I mean, Cloris mm -hmm. Leachman's hilarious, yeah. and you got Gene Wilder, and you got Peter Boyle. And Madeline you know, Kahn. Madeline Kahn, mm -hmm. yeah. Madeline Kahn, who could just hum to herself, and it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love once they make the monster smart at the end, and <laughs> the constables do like, oh, well, this changes the whole situation then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Frank. I think the monster murdered a guy in the jail cell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's smart now. It's okay. Well, that, that changes everything, and the crowd is instantly okay with this. It was, like, it was well, a, he can talk. So. It was a beautiful speech. Yeah, yeah, it was a wonderful speech. And it's really accurate to the movies, the, yeah. the actual Frankenstein movies. Yeah. Like the crowds are so stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and it's like, it's funny too, because he's, Frankenstein was supposed to be his, his grandfather, so clearly mm. this is not set during that time. I'm not sure what time period it's supposed to be. Mm. I was trying maybe to figure that out Maybe early 1900s, too. maybe? I, I was trying to get a look at the date on the Wall Street Journal that he was reading oh, there yeah. at the end. <laughs> it did look like it said 1974, so maybe it takes place in 74. Like, I love it. <laughs> Because I'm like, is it supposed to be the 70s? Like, why are they all are, like going around in like Lederhosen and shit? Because Transylvania. <laughs> Maybe that's just that Transylvania is still stuck in the time period. I love everyone. Everyone in Transylvania speaks English too, or like with a slight German accent. Yeah. yeah. I, I did have a theory, you know, because um, that scene at the very end where he's in bed. Mm. Maybe this is all just a prequel to Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> there was an episode of that show where on Halloween he was dressed like the monster. Nice. I just that kept was thinking nice. of Puchinski. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> you said at the beginning when they were showing like little trivia. Yeah, yeah. Like, you lean over to me and you're like, Peter Boyle once said he prefers Puchinski. <laughs> <laughs> True fact. <laughs> was he drunk? <laughs> I got to be a dog. <laughs> Way better. It was a high point in my career. <laughs> I also loved Pluto Nash. <laughs> I, he's been in classics, but I question his taste. <laughs> Where's the Fathom Events Pluto Nash coming? Yeah. Oh, Fuck yeah. yeah. Real soon. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll start up, and then all of a sudden, it's time for a riff track. Well, that makes sense. Now I get it. Like, I'm like, first of all, why was I even here not thinking it was a riff track for Pluto to Can you imagine Peter Boyle dies, and they're like, in honor of, of Peter Boyle's career, Pluto Nash. Yes. <laughs> I would go... Kuczynski on the big yeah. screen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That would look horrifying on the big screen. But you would go in a heartbeat. Yeah. Don't yeah. Be fuck yet. Was there anything about seeing this movie again that you noticed on the big screen, but maybe didn't like watching it before? The makeup and stuff. You yeah. could you could see like the the lines and, and mm. how they applied it. And you know, on yeah. VHS it's a little bit harder. So there's some of those th things that you notice, but mm. Um, I mean, it, it was great being able to see it like yeah. this because mm -hmm. it was a it was a nice print of it mm -hmm. and and seeing it on the big screen and um, and the audience was really receptive to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with a big crowd like that, that mm -hmm. was fun. Yeah, I think it was a really nice way to see it for the first time. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, there was because I don't know how many times I've seen this movie widescreen, honestly. Because I was I grew up with the VHS, which most mm. certainly was not in widescreen. Mm -hmm. So watching it again here, I don't think I ever noticed before that in the putting on the Ritz scene, Marty Feldman is playing the one playing yeah, the piano. Like blinking, uh, miss it because yeah. he yeah. doesn't have the hood on or anything either. I mean, I always noticed it when he comes in at the end after he or at the end of that scene when he knocks out Gene Wilder, but I didn't realize until seeing it tonight. Like, oh. Igor's playing the piano. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I like that you never really know if his name's actually Igor if he just said that to fuck with him. <laughs> he said it to fuck with yeah, him. Yeah, I know, but then he just goes by it the whole movie. Yeah, so. But, I, but I, I love that you can't tell... If he just has a fake hump to fuck with you, yeah, like that that too. keep switching around. Yeah, like everything about this guy is like, how much is real? I, 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 I do love that he keeps carrying on through the movie, calling him 
Gmoda Froderick. Yeah. Froderick. <laughs> Froderick. Or sometimes he'll just, yes, master. He yeah. goes back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I laugh so much. I, I think I was probably the one in the theater laughing the loudest at this. I, I don't but, know. I laughed pretty loud the, the, when the girl was shot back into the window. Well, that, that, yeah. yeah. That when great. the... The whole, uh, you just made a yummy sound. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> well, if it wasn't you, it wasn't you. Like, I was probably laughing the loudest in that scene. I don't know why. <laughs> it is funny in that yeah. movie to say yummy sound. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is. Yeah. It is, and that, like, Igor is just so confused in that scene, because... <laughs> If, like, I'm imagining I'm in that situation and someone says, oh, you like it? Oh, well, I'll give you the recipe or whatever the line is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's in this. He's, who are you talking to? <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> you just made a yummy sound. <laughs> <laughs> so we we don't recommend this. No. <laughs> it's really cheap. They got the set for like five bucks or something. Yeah, you could tell the castle was a painting, and uh, it's black and white. I mean, this is the seventies. People, come on. What's Mel Brooks gonna make next? A silent movie? No. I love too. One of the trivia things was like true or false. The studios loved when they said they're gonna film it in black and white. Yeah. <laughs> Like something like I, I did love yeah. the way that Brooks told that story when he was at Columbia and he just got yeah. chased out. <laughs> yeah. And then these Jews chased me out. <laughs> you can't film this in black and white. <laughs> Don't worry, the back of the VHS will be in black and white. <laughs> and the still shots when they showed it at a Fathom event 40 years later. <laughs> what does that mean? I like when he's making fun of Fox. He said, like, they wanted to call it Mel Brooks Alley. He's like, I told them to call it Boulevard, and they did. So that's how stupid Fox is. <laughs> 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 yeah, I liked looking at that list of the other movies that were shot mm. on that set. Mm. I, I saw X Files on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Omen <laughs> two. Yes, yeah. Omen two on there. Um, I, I I can't remember what a lot of them were, but there were a couple of them listed where I was like, "Well, that's not as good as Young Frankenstein," <laughs> but it's on this plaque. John Trapper, MD. <laughs> yeah, Trapper John, MD was yeah. one. <laughs> Modern Family. <laughs> hey, that's of historical significance, guys. <laughs> True. Modern Family is the very first mockumentary-style TV series. <laughs> Any final thoughts before I melt? Yeah. yeah. It was like reviewing it, it in the summer in, again. It turned into a sauna in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, it's been actually like really cool fall weather yeah. the past couple weeks, but suddenly it's July again. Yeah. I was like, hey, God. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, man. Yeah, but I, I'd recommend it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, even if you don't see it, I guess you can't see it on the big screen now. Maybe there's Too a, bad. Yeah. Yeah, is there another, is there an encore of it? Or? I don't think so. Don't think so. Okay, yeah. well, you missed it, but you can yeah. still watch it because it's a very a easily classic, watch so. this. <laughs> you can, so, you can yeah. pick up the Blu-ray easily. Oh, yeah. 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 Sometimes they do do encores, even if one hasn't been scheduled. Okay. Uh, right now, this is the only screening scheduled, but I know Notice like later this month on the Fathom listing, it was like back by popular demand an encore presentation of Rob Zombie's Thirty One. <laughs> like, nice. okay, well there might be one extra one for <laughs> Young Frankenstein then if Thirty One is getting an encore presentation. No, everyone prefers Thirty One to Young Frankenstein. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Rob Zombie probably does. <laughs> So we're going to be back uh, over the next few days with movies that won't be as good as this. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think that Masterminds is going to be a classic. That and middle school, worst years of my life. It'll be great. <laughs> See ya. Bye.